Okay, so good morning, uh, good day everyone. So we'll be having our third lesson or our uh, unit topic two, which is the market. So after the comprehensive processes of seeking, screening, and seizing the opportunity, it is now time for the entrepreneur to focus on the chosen business and dig deep. So once we have already uh, made sure that the opportunity that we have spotted is already uh, screened, uh, pwede na natin kumbaga simulan yung ating plan for our business. So this lesson will help you understand the behavior, the attitude and psychology of the entrepreneur's customers through various ways of customer validation. So for our third lesson, so we'll be starting with the market research. So the market research, uh, the, the focus of the market research is for us to know our customers. And marketing research is a comprehensive process of understanding the customers' intricacies and the industry they revolve in. This is also one of the most critical tasks of an entrepreneur. Kasi um, magiging result, the marketing research natin will be our major investment in our business. And it will lead uh, the entrepreneur to the most effective strategies to employ. So one of the reasons why we have to know our customers is para alam natin kung ano ba yung mga uh, strategies na maliging effective dun sa ating business. So this uh, marketing research aims to scrutinize the target market, their specific requirements, and the market size where the business operates. So the marketing size, so the marketing size is simply the size of the arena where the uh, entrepreneur's business will play. Kung baga, ito lamang yung uh, population or uh, uh, population or target market of an entrepreneur in a specific uh, kung baga, community or society. So this is just the approximation of the number of buyers and sellers in a particular market. So there are several ways, uh, steps on how we can uh, identify or determine the market size. So the first one we is we have to estimate the potential market. So again, this is the approximate number of customers that will buy the product. So this is, uh, this is usually called as the market space or the market universe because it's, this is the total market. So again, this is just a approximation or estimation of the total uh, market of our society or our community where we will place our business. Then after Doing step one, so step two naman, we are going to eliminate the customers who are unlikely to buy product. So identify na natin ilan nga ba yung possible nating target uh, customers. Then for step three or the last step, so we are going na, we are now going to estimate our market share. So the market share is the plotting and calculation of the competitors. Uh, market share to determine the remaining portion for the new uh, venture. So, uh, ano kaya yung possible nating maging market share? Or gaano kaya uh, kadami? Kala kayong percentage ng ating market share? And possible ba talaga na magawa natin yung business na yun doon sa community na yun? So, let's have this sample marketing research. So, by the way, uh, yung, marketing, uh, yung part ng determining the marketing size is done kapag ka, so, uh, kumbaga malaki na yung ating magiging uh, arena, market arena. So, in our case naman, or in your case, so pwede natin, uh, kumbaga, hindi na uh, is, follow yung step 1 to 3. So, just by observation na lamang yung gagawin natin on this part. Kasi hindi naman sobrang laki ng community ng inyong uh, gagawan ng business. So, this is an example of my marketing research. So, for step 1, So again, for our step one, we're going to estimate the potential market. So for example, rice, the staple food of Filipinos, virtually covers the whole country in terms of market size because majorities of Filipinos eat rice. So our potential market here are, uh, is the Filipinos. Because lahat naman ng of Filipinos, or majority of, the, majority of the Filipinos are eating rice. And for our step two, we're going to eliminate the customers who are probably unlikely to buy the product. So, ang naisip na business data is a rice retailing business. So, using that, the uh, entrepreneur can already uh, already eliminate socioeconomic classes A, B, and C because most of these customers buy rice 
uh, involved or are given freely by some employers. So, kumbaga, uh, nakapag-identify na siya ng socioeconomic classes. Si A, B, and C ay tinanggal na niya kasi ay uh, hindi naman bumibili. Kumbaga, uh, hindi sila bumibili ng retail na rice. Instead, they are buying rice and socks. Or some of them are given by the employers. And for our third step, so ito na yung i-identify natin yung uh, market share. So ito lang yung may konting uh, kumbaga computation. So this is the given condition or given uh, facts about uh, the business or about the community. So approximately in that community where we are going to start our business, we have 500 families with an average of 5 members per family. And on that 500 families, we only uh, we have 475 families na kumakain ng, uh, uh, ng rice. And they consume an average of 1 kilo of rice per day. And aside from you, meron pa din na apat na rice retailers na sa, uh, sa community na yon. And uh, andun na sila for uh, 10 years. They have the business for 10 years. And they also have the equal market shares of 20% each. So, total of 80% of the market ay sa kanila bumibili. And, yung natitirang 20% ay yun yung mga bumibili ng per sack or yung mga ay yung mga bumibili ng per sack sa mga groceries or convenience store. And, the average net profit or yung tubo per kilo of rice is 10 pesos. So, ito yung uh, kumbaga parang tinutubo ng no, apat na the rice retailing business. So we have just one formula for this one, the market size of rice business is equal to the number of families who eat rice times the average consumption per annum. So let's have an example of this. So balikan natin. So again, we only have 475 families na kumakain ng rice at sa loob ng isang araw ay uh, nakaka-consume sila ng tiki isang kilo. So per annum means sa loob ng isang taon yung ating compute. So we have here for 75 times 1 times 365. So it will give us 173,375 kilos of rice. So sa loob ng isang taon, yung possible na makonsume ng 475 families ay 173,375 kilos ng bigas. Now we are going to identify naman yung possible na tubo kapag uh, yun yung target, uh, yun yung biniling kilos of rice. So again, Balikan natin yung given condition na ang, ang net profit ng uh, rice retailing business ay 10 pesos per kilo. So that is why we are going to multiply yung, uh, yung 173,375 to 10 pesos. So per, uh, per year, ang nagiging net profit ng uh, rice retailing business from 475 families ay 1,700,000. 33,750. So again, that is the net profit palamang. Next, we're going to identify naman yung mark, uh, potential market share. So again, nabanggit kanina doon sa condition na ang market share ng bawat uh, rice retailing business ay 20%. So yung ating nakuhang market size profit ay itatimes lang natin doon sa 20% ka market share. So ibig sabihin, uh, 346,750 yung possible na net profit ng isang rice retailing business given na 20% uh, yung kanilang market share. So, syempre ikaw, you are, uh, you are just starting up with your business. That is why you, uh, you will be reducing your markup by 2 pesos. So, kumbaga, instead na 10 pesos ang iyong magiging net profit, mag, uh, gagawin mo siyang 8 pesos Nang sa ganun, kung baga, uh, marketing strategy, uh, strategy na siya na kung saan uh, mas bibili or karamihan ng uh, customers ay sa'yo na bibili, uh, bibili kasi mas bababa ang iyong bigay sa kanila. So we're going to recompute our potential market share. So we have here 173,375 pesos. So, uh, so correct, uh, yeah times 20% times 8 pesos. So, hindi na po siya natin sa 10 i-multiply kasi nga, again, uh, 
pinawas natin yung yung ating markup ng 2 pesos. So that is a marketing strategy for our for our rights retaining business. So our possible market share will be 277,400 pesos. So this market share for a startup business is an attractive venture. The entrepreneur also has a bigger chance of capturing the market share of competitors if he implements relevant and enticing marketing strategies. So of course, this will only be possible or makukuha lang natin yung 277,400 if uh, mag tayo or mag implement yung entrepreneur ng relevant and enticing marketing strategies. So that is how we compute our um, market share. Next, we also have here the primary and the secondary target market. So most of the entrepreneurs believe in the uh, misconception na kaya nilang uh, iserve lahat ng uri ng customers. But uh, an entrepreneur must focus only on the customers whom they can serve beneficially. So again, hindi, ta uh, hindi, nat uh, hindi kaya iserve ang isang business ang lahat ng uri ng uh, customers. So given the limited resources of entrepreneurs, they should be able to understand the different market segments. So in, in identifying our target market, we have here the so-called um, market segmentation. So market segmentation is the process of grouping similar or homogeneous customers according to demographic, psychographic, geographic, and behavior. So this gives an entrepreneur a, a, a holistic and general view of the market group that he or she is serving. So dapat uh, alam natin kung paan i-divide the customers into different categories. So let's start with the first segmentation, which is the demographic segmentation. The demographic segmentation is the process of grouping customers according to relevant socioeconomic variables for the business venture. So these variables may include income range and social class, occupation, gender, and age, religion, and ethnicity. So the data na to will help the entrepreneur target customers accurately and classify their respective needs, wants, and desires. So one of uh, the least lang in using this demographic segmentation is that uh, this one is focusing solely on the demographic data. And you all know that demographic data uh, changes within the society. So therefore, the entrepreneur must be alert with these changes. So hindi naman, uh, kumbaga, hindi naman palagi ng income ng isang uh, tao ay yun lamang. So they, it can, they can either have a raise or pwedeng matanggal sila sa trabaho. Their social class can also be changed. Their occupation can also be changed as well as their age. Uh, as well as their age. So ang isang entrepreneur, if they are going to use a demographic segmentation, alert dapat siya sa mga changes sa society. So income range, so let's start with the income range and social class of the customers. So these are very important factors for the entrepreneur to consider because this represents the purchasing power of the market. So kung mas madami yung mga nasa lower class uh, na, uh, na tao dun sa isang community, so why start a business na kung saan magiging uh, mataas yung presyo ng iyong mga uh, products? So occupation should also be considered not just to determine the customer's income, but also their daily routine where goods and services can be properly positioned. So, mas, uh, kumbaga sa isang community, kapag ka alam natin mad, uh, madami yung nag-work sa ganoong uh, company or lugar, so parang mas, uh, ang iisipin natin ay papaano natin silang i-entice na sa atin bumili. So, gender and age group are data that must be mined because the life cycle of customers and their gender influence their buying behavior. So, uh, minsan, mas, uh, kumbaga, mas, madaming, mas madaling i-entice yung mga uh, nasa teen age years kaysa dun sa mga uh, medyo matatanda na. 
So we have to identify if in the certain community, ano ba yung, nag, uh, yung hatian ng age group. So religion and ethnicity also should be taken into account because this affects the way they buy products or avail of services. So example, yung food choices, depends on holidays, the traditions and beliefs, spending habits, and conservativeness. So naapektuhan pa din ng, uh, ng ethnicity or yung kanilang choices, yung kanilang pag-avail uh, ng isang product. Next segmentation is the psycho uh, psychographic segmentation. This is the process of grouping customers according to their perceptions, their way of life, motivations, and inclination. So a product or service can be perceived differently by different people. So that is why we need to identify ano ba yung perceptions nila when it comes to the business that you are going to start. Kasi maaari iba-iba yung perception ng uh, tao dun sa iyong magiging product. So the customer's way of life will give an entrepreneur an overview of what product or services can, be, uh, can best suit the problems of the customers that is happening on a daily basis. So a person's motivation can either be, uh, can either involve the needs of the person, for example, their clothing, their food, their shelter, or it can either be the products that they seek to avoid pain and give pleasure. Customers' inclinations involve preferring one product over another as a result of gaining a refreshing experience when using the product. So, the entrepreneur must be aware of what makes the customers buy the products so he or she will know how to segregate the customers based on their way of life. So that is our uh, psychographic segmentation. Next, we also have the geographic seg uh, segmentation. This is the process of grouping customers according to their location. And this is critical in the analysis of the target market as this encompasses the cultures, the beliefs, preferences, politics, and lifestyle of a certain geography. So this segmentation matters more if the locations targeted have different sets of qualities. So for example, the so unique products such as pork can uh, such as pork can easily be sold in region three or in central Luzon or in region four or the Calabar zone. Pero mahirap uh, magbenta ng meat products sa autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao or the ARMM or sa region twelve or the Sok Sargent. Kasi they have uh, their regions differ and of course their religion is also different from us. So remember na ang Muslims do not eat pork. Next is the behavioral segmentation. This is the process of grouping customers according to their actions. So these behaviors are instigated by occasions. So occasions drastic, uh, drastically affect the customer's buying behavior. So if we can notice, the Christmas season entices the people to buy gifts. Kapag Valentine season naman, it encourages people to buy flowers and chocolates. Summer season, yung mga, uh, of course, yung mga pang outing, outfits. Birthdays and graduations includes cost, uh, induce customers to go to buffet restaurants or hotels and resorts to celebrate. So nakadepende minsan sa kung ano occasion, um, ang way ng pag-avail ng isang customer. So their desired uh, benefits can also be considered their loyalty. So loyalty is the result of maintaining satisfied customers. So behavioral segmentation through loyalty is the major key result area of the entrepreneur as it is more expensive to sell to new customers than to maintain customers. So loyalty programs and rewards separate loyal customers from the new ones. So we have to uh, gain the loyalty of our customers. And, uh, and usage of products or availment of the services. So those are the different kinds of uh, segmentation in targeting our market or in identifying our primary and secondary target markets.
So although segmentation is a strategic and an efficient way of classifying and grouping customer, we also have this term in the marketing called the market aggregation. So aside from market segmentation, meron din tayong tinatawag na market aggregation. So market aggregation happens when an entrepreneur wants to target a broader market. So kumbaga hindi lang specific yung target market niya. But rather, hindi naman lahat, pero broader lang yung kanyang target market. Because the product, uh, this is because the product or service that the business offers is suited for an undifferentiated market such as fruits. So wala namang kaano, uh, kumbaga segmentation kapag ka fruits yung ating product. Same with veg, uh, vegetables, rice, water, and bread. So again, aside from uh, market segmentation, we also have here the market aggregation. So after knowing our customers, so we should now uh, move with talking to our customers. So marketing research will not be complete without talking directly to our target customers. So it is good to estimate the numbers, such as the market size, the market share, and the other general market assumptions. But the best way to fully understand the customers is to ask them about their specific thoughts and desires. We have several ways or the common methods of collecting data or uh, several ways on how we can talk to our customers. So the first one is done through an interview. So interview is one of the most reliable and credible ways of getting relevant information from the target customers. So it is a face-to-face -face contact between the researcher or the entrepreneur and a respondent. So we have two types of interview, the unstructured and the structured. So kapag sinabi natin unstructured interview, this is an informal type of interview where uh, there is no specific set of questions. So kumbaga free-flowing siya, depende sa, sa entrepreneur or sa researcher kung ano yung kanyang possible na itanong. And kapag structured naman, this one employs a specific set of questions and produces quantitative data. So one of the challenge lang in using this uh, method of collecting data is that this uh, method can get unbiased uh, answers or biased answers from the respondents. Minsan yung respondent na tinatanong natin ay kumbaga they, are, uh, they tend to be forgetful. So they are having a hard time kumbaga uh, i-refresh yung isasagot dun sa ating tanong. Minsan naman, due to the difficulty of the questions, nahihirapang uh, sumagot yung ating respondents. So kung ano na lamang yung maisagot niya, nagiging bias na siya. And uh, it can also be affected by the environment. Minsan, I, they can be influenced by their relatives or their peers. Or minsan, uh, na-influensyahan din sila no, uh, ng interviewer mismo or the ng entrepreneur mismo. So that is one of the challenge in using this method. Then the next one, the FGD or the focus group discussion. This is commonly used by the market researchers to capture qualitative results from target customers. So this process of mining customer and non-customer experience and insights about a specific product or service. The third method we have here is the observation. The observation is one of the preferred and practical methods of generating ideas because the researcher documents the behavioral patterns of people or of objects without necessarily requiring them to participate in the research process. So observation is reliable because it allows the uh, researcher to see the real and actual behavior of customers rather than hearing what they need to say. So unlike dun sa interview, uh, na minsan ay bias, incomplete, minsan ay sugar-coated or exaggerated, so, so obser uh, observation, so kung baga uh, natatagtag natin yung factor na yun. And the fourth one is the traditional and online survey. So this one is uh, really applicable, especially now that we are uh, having the pandemic, we cannot go out, we cannot uh, just ask people. 
we can use this one, the, the online surveys specifically. So this, uh, the process of getting answers from a sample of respondents derived from a particular population. So this is advantageous to the researcher because it does not only, uh, because not only it is systematized <clears throat> and easier to analyze, but there is also a definitive qual uh, quantitative result to be interpreted. So those are just some of the common methods of collecting data. So this all sums our lesson uh, three, the market. Remember that the market research serves as the bridge that connects an entrepreneur with his customers. So if you can remember, nabanggit dun sa <clears throat> uh, traits ng isang entrepreneur, dapat siya isang communicator. And the market research is one good uh, way on how the entrepreneur communicate with his customers.